don't think. Sorry, try it. Panna panna. Or when another day we will do that. Or another day we can go here and check it out. Don't do that. Don't underestimate potential. And don't be afraid to push them a little bit in exercise and things like that. Keep it simple. Don't give them too complicated uh, tasks to do. And remember that functional carryover is key. What that means is, my inner intervention, my own character, that we do, that we do, rigidity, we do, that we travel. It should translate into my being more functional as a human being. I must be able to dress myself. I must be able to take my cup of coffee and drink. I must be able to do those. That should be the goal. So the physiotherapy or whatever we do will not be safe for everybody. Because your functional goal, like I said, may be that you have to get into a bus every day. My functional goal may be something else. Like that, we have to individualize the occupational therapy. And you must learn. There are two ways. One is you can restore a function. We may panni tundare, panna mudile, it will be restored panni tundare. The other is you can compensate for a function. So if my hand is shaking and my medicines have brought down the shaking to this much, I can give a double handed cup for that person to drink their tea and coffee from. So what do they do? They hold with this hand, this hand and drink it. So that what are we doing? We are compensating for the disability. All with me or have I lost all of you? No, Anybody with me? Now, when we look at the motor problems, there are so many other things which have nothing to do with drugs, which we can do. So we go a little into this. So non-pharmacologically, we have the education, physical therapy, exercise, occupational and speech and language therapy, diet and nutrition, and psychosocial intervention. Psychosocial means we are able to put them back into the community. So they must be able to function in their whatever <coughs> role they play. They must be able to go to a wedding or whatever. So we try to give them as much function as possible. So non-pharmacological, again, the, uh, we have to inform patients about the disorder. We have to, elderly patients with, uh, are very often undernourished. And with difficulty in swallowing in Parkinson's, they are very often undernourished. So they are not eating enough. So we need to work on that and a high fiber diet will help constipation and enough water. Another thing because of this parayaratnala they stop drinking water, they don't drink enough water. So we have to work with all that and of course various other supplements. So exercise is very very beneficial for any type of Parkinson's or Parkinson-like syndrome, the whole gene bank lot which I told you, it can be helpful for everybody. What does it do? It improves cognitive function, it improves the way they think. And that is because there is something in the brain called brain derived neurotropic factor, VDNF. When you exercise, the VDNF in your brain goes up. Levels of VDNF go up. And that improves your cognition. It improves your mood, sleep, and energy. And it reduces constipation, it can improve the gait, the grip strength, balance, motor coordination. Now, I'm going to go, this I'll go through very fast. Now the physiotherapy interventions, when I do for physiotherapists, I will spend time on these. But here, I am just going to give you the headache. So, we can give them relaxing exercises, where from the bed, we rotate them, so that it helps them to be able to turn when they want to turn. And there are a lot of rotation. Then we have flexibility exercises, functional training, to do, be able to do a particular job, balance training. And uh, uh, balance training, we actually make them walk. Uh, we, we make people walk like this, and we walk backwards like this, then they have to walk sideways, then they can walk with their feet like this. All of this will improve posture. So, and we ask them to straighten them. Okay? And see, when you're teaching balance exercises, you can put a cloth around their waist and support them and teach them to regain their balance. Then we have locomotor training, which is making a person walk. And then there are a lot of things where we, we give them support and make them stand straight so the stoop is not there and so we are more stable. We give them special shoes, etc. Then cardio -pulmonary. We want people also to be have the heart, heart and the lungs also should be good function. 
So exercise pranayama that helps in cardiopulmonary training. Also, gently aerobic exercise. We cannot do very, we cannot make really you walk on a treadmill at the speed a normal person does. But you can do some mimic like a treadmill, and you can just make them go normal walking. And fatigue management. Remember that these patients already have all the stiffness, tremor, etc., and they get tired very easily. So when physiotherapy is planned for such patients, we don't give, go to a bedside, give it for half an hour and go off. What we should do is keep them in the department, physiotherapy department, give exercise for 5-10 minutes, leave them, attend to some other patient, come back after a while, and another 10 minutes. Like that, if you do, you'll find that you're able to get in more effective physiotherapy into the patient. So summing up of that, rotation, flexibility, strength training, locomotor, balance, functional training, fatigue, cardiopulmonary and posture. So it takes care of the, all the motor problems that the institute has. And there are adaptive devices which we can give, like a raised toilet seat, some support for the spoon, then how to sit from back, there is a thing that can be attached, we can do it there. And combing the hair, you can have a long handle pole. And there are a lot of things. When you have to cut vegetables, you don't have this guard because the hand is shaking, no? So it won't, the knife will go there, but it won't go beyond. Then this is a round door handle, and we convert it by putting this thing on top, making it like a handle, uh, elongated handle. Like right? the diapers, things to put on your socks, etc. These are all available. I told you about a double handle cup, this kind of cup, and we have this plot on the available. And some Parkinson's patients can have a rollator also. The rollator is different from a, uh, uh, from other uh, like a walker and things like that because one is more elegant. Second, when they go somewhere, they can store whatever they have to carry inside this and they just pull this thing down, they can sit. So if they go shopping for instance, to a mall or something. So they can be independent uh, but they are safe, okay? Then in, in the home, when you have a patient with Parkinson's, you have to make certain adaptations. Now we must get rid of potential obstacles on the floor, such as throw rugs, throw rugs and extension cords. So if you have on the floor a cloth mat, when you walk, it will go like that, a cloth will be the thing and it will So no floor rugs in a home which has if you have a carpet, it must be a heavy carpet, which they cannot, which will not get folded. Okay? And chairs that are easier to get up from. Now this kind of chair is much easier to get up from than a sofa. And many of our furniture nowadays, the beds and the sofas are too low. Even normal anybody finds it difficult to get up from it. So it should be a little height. The cot should be on a little height. If need be put another mattress, increase the height. Or some people put uh, under the leg of the cot, you put something to keep more weight. Wooden blocks can be made with a hole in it and the height can be increased. Okay? And uh, install railings along the wall. In many homes, many of my patients, they just put, supposing I have to go from, uh, this is the my bedroom and this is the dining room and I have to go every day to eat, but I'm a little unstable. From this, this wall will have a railing. So I just hold and Okay, so you can install railings around the walls in the home and get rid of any bathrooms. Bathroom is a very dangerous place for even normal people. If, especially in our country where we have this habit of pouring water on the floor. So when the floor is wet, it double danger. If you have Parkinson's, triple danger. And if you have freezing, quadruple danger. So you have to be very careful. And anyway, the toilet seat is there and in the bathroom, don't expect them to hold the tap and get up or hold the toilet uh, paper holder and get up because those don't give way. You have to put a specific hand rail, safety rail, like they do in the handicapped toilet so that when they are getting up from the toilet, they hold that and then get up. Okay? So home adaptations also have to be made. And there are a lot of strategies.